GI bleeding is a common reason to visit the ER. Let's discuss some of the major types of bleeds and how we distinguish which of those are dangerous. GI bleeds often need to be evaluated in the ER because of special dangers of bleeding in your GI tract. If you have a bad nosebleed, you can hold pressure and a clot will typically form. But in the GI tract, digestive enzymes are going to break down that same clot and so it won't hold as well. Also, how do you even hold pressure? And you don't really know how much you're bleeding. You just sort of see the aftermath. You don't know how much there is and where it's coming from. And so this is a reason that so many people are frightened and they go to the ER to be evaluated for GI bleeding. A physical exam and some labs can often bring a lot of clarity to whether GI bleed is actually dangerous. If you're not feeling faint, your heart's not racing, you're not feeling dizzy, then it may be possible that you can visit your usual doctor, as long as you feel like you can quickly get in to see them. But many times in the night, just certainly on the weekends, you're really going to feel pressed to go to the ER. GI bleeds are often larger than they actually appear to be. It doesn't take a lot of blood in a toilet bowl to make the entire thing appear red, like a horror movie. And at the end of the day, it's not your job to try to guess whether your GI bleed is dangerous or not. It's the ER and my job to figure that out. So here are some of the factors that we use to determine that. A precise history of your bleeding is really helpful for us to gauge how much blood you've actually lost. When did it start? How frequent has the bleeding been? And some sense of the volume of blood can collectively tell us, was this a lot of blood that you've lost? Or maybe it's more that you've had a lot of vomiting and a little bit of bleeding. Sudden diarrhea following a suspect meal at a food truck is probably infectious diarrhea. But when it turns bloody, there's often a new sense of urgency and people will go to the ER. Yet bloody diarrhea from an infection is unlikely to ever need a transfusion. Maybe you'll need IV fluids, but if you can keep up with that through drinking Pedialyte, then you probably are going to do just fine. Oftentimes, these infections will resolve from our own immune system. Sometimes they need a little bit of help from some antibiotics. But oftentimes, this is an evaluation that can be made by a clinic doctor if you have the time to get to one. Suddenly pooping a large amount of blood is probably a diverticular bleed. And good news, these tend to be self-limited but you may end up needing a transfusion if you've lost a very substantial amount of blood. It's also not uncommon that people have such a large bowel movement that they pass out. And this is not actually because they lost so much blood in that single moment. It's just such the strong bowel movement has an impact on your heart called a vagal maneuver. It slows down and your blood pressure suddenly drops. There's a lot more that I could say about diverticular bleeds and that deserves a separate video. But let's go on to some other causes of bleeding that might take you to the ER. A slower onset of bleeding that is accompanied by a lot of change in bowel habits and abdominal pain sounds a lot like inflammatory bowel disease, and it's going to require that you get a colonoscopy in order to make that diagnosis. But just because there is bleeding day after day does not mean that you need to go to the emergency room. Very often, this can be serviced in your friendly neighborhood endoscopy center. Similarly, if you're an older person that's having an onset of rectal bleeding, and especially if this is painless, that's particularly concerning for being a colon cancer. But similarly, you don't need an emergent colonoscopy. What you need is a good primary care team who can get you into a GI doctor expediently, and oftentimes we can get you straight into the endoscopy center, bypassing the GI clinic, because we know that we need to evaluate this with a colonoscopy. It's so important to pay attention to the quality of the bleeding that you're having. If you're vomiting pure blood, that is a very big problem. But if you're mainly having vomiting that now turned a little bit bloody, that probably just signals that you've vomited so many times that your esophagus has gone raw. If you go online and looking at bleeding after vomiting, you're going to read about other things that are scarier, like a Mallory Weiss tear. But that'll be distinguished by having more large amounts of blood all of a sudden come after several episodes of vomiting. Or the even more frightening, Borhov's esophagus, where the esophagus actually ruptures apart. This is beyond painful and you will feel beyond bad. If you're actually able to have your esophagus rupture and then proceed to Google the symptoms, you're a better man than me. You may be asked if you've been having dark vomit. Dark vomit is usually also not that worrisome. Is this just dark green? Well, that's probably just bile. 
If it's just a dark brown, that may be a little bit of old blood, but it's also probably still just some gastric juices that have gotten a little rot. And if you're in the ER, you're going to be asked a lot of questions about how much you've taken ibuprofen, Motrin, Aleve, Naproxen, and a long list of other medications that are called non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. These are important to cover because they make the esophagus, the stomach, and the small bowel develop ulcers. It's really important that you take any medication like this with an ample amount of water so that it at least clears the esophagus. That's going to reduce the risk that you get an esophageal ulcer from it, but you're still going to be at risk of getting a stomach ulcer, a duodenal ulcer, and these can result in some really big bleeds. If that ulcer erodes down into a blood vessel, we now have a really big problem, and this is one that has to be endoscopically managed. Ultimately, what distinguishes a dangerous bleed is that it is vascular. If you've had an ulcer that erodes into a blood vessel, it's the blood vessel that I need to clip close or cauterize. On the other hand, if there's just a rough stomach from a lot of use of aspirin, then this is something that will heal with some rest, relaxation, and some proton pump inhibitors. Even more important than the endoscopy is that on arriving to the ER, a patient is rapidly evaluated and resuscitated. It's really dangerous for me to try to rush into an endoscopy with a patient who is not resuscitated. These patients, they need blood, they need fluid, and they need good IV access that allows us to get in potent medications that are gonna support the heart and the blood pressure while also delivering the medications that I'm gonna to need to give to get a patient sedated so that they can tolerate an endoscopy. If you're presently facing a GI bleed, please discuss your symptoms with a healthcare professional. And if you're showing signs of shock, then please call emergency services. They will be able to arrive to you and begin resuscitation far faster than you can try to safely get yourself to the emergency room. Thank you for watching, and as ever, be safe.